When we have textures that are far away from the camera, from what we've learned so far, a scene can look kind of bad. And let me show you an example of a scene that doesn't look too good, using just what we know so far. It's supposed to be a checkerboard that extends infinitely in every direction. It's actually drawn as a giant quadrilateral with a texture applied to it. This texture right here, a checkerboard texture. And let me show you what it looks like using just what we've learned so far. It's kind of hard to demonstrate on a video like this, but I'll try. This is a screenshot. I'll just zoom in a lot. And you'll see when I zoom in that off in the distance, the scene doesn't look particularly good. It looks pretty ugly. It suffers from something called aliasing. And actually, like I said, it's hard to demonstrate this on a video, but if you want to see for yourself, you can go to the program and scroll down to Draw Scene. And right here, you can uncomment these two lines of code and comment out this right here to see how it looks, just using what we've learned so far. And why exactly can't we get this scene to look right yet? Well, let me show you using this animated picture. It'll start out by showing a 10 by 10 grid, or 11 by 11, which is supposed to represent the pixels in the image. And so these are the pixels. It shows this particular pixel and rotates the scene. And as you can see, this pixel right here actually covers a pretty large area on the texture image. It covers a lot of pixels in the texture image. And if I switch over to the image that we use for texture mapping right here, uh, you'll remember that we actually represented each pixel as just a point on the texture image. So we were using at most four different text pixels from the original texture image to represent one pixel that we were drawing onto the screen. But as I showed you in this picture, we actually want to use a large number of texture pixels from the original image. And in order to do that, we're going to use a technique called MIP mapping. And let me show you a MIP map right here. Basically, it's just a bunch of images. So you have your original image, your original texture image, which in this case is 256 by 256. Then you make a scaled down version of it, which is 128 by 128. You have a smaller version, which is 64 by 64, one that's 32 by 32, and so on, all the way down to one by one. And, as you can see, each individual image is anti-aliased. That is, this, pic this picture right here, for example, each pixel corresponds to a somewhat large area on the original texture image, and it sort of averages together all of those pixels that it covers in this image. So, it sort of takes care of this averaging that we want to happen in advance. What we would want to happen is we would want to have this pixel right here, all the area that it covers, we want to average together all the pixels that it covers, more or less. And in order to approximate that, we're just going to use the MIP map, find the image that's uh, the image for which the one pixel on that image is closest to the area covered by the pixel that we're drawing to. So. Using a MIP map, we can get a pretty good approximation of what something should look like when it's far away. And in the case of this checkerboard, this red and blue tech checkerboard, the pixels that are far away are going to look sort of purple, rather than just red or just blue. Now, the way that we do MIP maps in OpenGL, it's actually fairly straightforward. I'll go up to this new function called load MIP mapped texture which is a lot like the load texture function that we've had in previous programs. The main difference is that instead of calling GL text image 2D, we call GLU build 2D MIP maps. And that makes it so that it takes the pixel data for the image and it builds all of these images. It gets them all set up so that we can use MIP mapping. And once we've load in, loaded in the MIP map texture right here, in order to use MIP mapping, we just go down here and draw a scene. We uh, send special parameters to the GL text parameter I function. So before we were using GL linear, 
which was blurry texture mapping. And here we want to use MIP mapping. So we'll use GL linear MIP map linear for the texture mapping type when the texture is far away. We actually have four options at our disposal for MIP mapping. You can use GL linear MIP map linear, GL linear MIP map nearest, GL nearest MIP map nearest, and GL nearest MIP map linear. And basically, we have four options because, first of all, we can select to use either one or two of these MIP map images. Uh, so, in other words, if we have two images that are closest to the size of the pixel, the area that it covers on the texture, then we would take both of them and use the average for those. So, depending on whether this is linear or nearest, we'll use either one or two of these pictures. And we're using two in this case, so we'll have linear. And this parameter right here is basically the same as before when we had GL linear and GL nearest. It indicates whether we want to use just one pixel on whichever image it is we're using, or sort of average together four pixels that are near the point that we're considering. So those are the four different options we have for MIP mapping. And we're using GL linear MIP map, near, MIP map linear, which makes the scene look like this. And so if I show you right here a screenshot of the, of the program and zoom in on it, you can see that off in the background, the pixels sort of look purple. They're sort of red and blue averaged together instead of just red or just blue in this ugly looking screenshot that I showed you earlier. And that's the idea behind MIP mapping. That's how we can use MIP mapping to make textures that are far away look pretty good.